hi guys in today's video we are going to be looking at how we can add some props to our foreground and background of our studio pics in adobe photoshop this is twisted creative allow you my name if it's your first time on this channel please do me a favor do me a favor by hitting that subscribe button not only by hitting that subscribe button also ring that notification bell so that i don't miss any of the next video without wasting much time let's get into it this is the image we are going to be using and we have this three set of drum then we have this and we have this then we also have this flower to, to blend it up. We are going to select this image and create a copy so as to place it in front while some things can go behind it. We are going to pick up our object selection tool and drag around the image. Then the selection is made but not too perfect. Let's pick our lasso tool and go in there and make some corrections. We have to add some background to the hair area so as to use background eraser tool to wipe up the hair. The selection is completed. Right click and feather with 2. Use your Ctrl C for copy, Ctrl V for paste. We now have the image on a transparent background but make sure you don't move the image from position. We have to go to the image and hold our Ctrl and click inside the boss then the selection is back. Then we have to right click and Select inverse, right click again and feather with 2, hit OK. Then we delete 3 or 4 times to clear the fringes around the image. Then we have to delete 1, 2, 3, 4. Then we have it cleaned up. So we are going to create a selection for the white background and wherever the white background is present in the hair. Right click and feather with 2, hit OK. Click on add dropper to make sure your sample size is 5x5 five five average pixel. Then go to your background eraser to make sure you are using soft round brush. Your hardness should be at 0. In between these three eyedroppers, make sure the middle one is selected. Then the limit should be at discontinuous. Then the tolerance should be at 65 or 67. Then use your plus mark as a target on the white background. Then click and hold, then wipe the entire white background or any color you are using. Then you use your control D to deselect. Then we now have the image well selected from the background. Then what we are going to do next is to enable this and we we'll have it like the original image. We, are, we have to go and bring in the props. Then we we'll have three drum sets here. Then pick our move tool and drag it to. So we are going to drop it here. We are going to reduce the size to how it normally looks in real life. To reduce it to a particular extent like this should be okay. Then hit okay. Let's go for the next one. Let's go to this one. Let's drag this down to the image and leave it here. Um, placement, placement. Okay, let's place it somewhere around here. This is going to be representing the big drum which is going to be in real life it can be as big as this then we are going to be letting it go behind the image so hit ok here but like as you are seeing you are seeing is like it's in front of the image which is we are going to bring it down under the transparent image then drop it there as you can see it's gone behind okay we can create a little shadow because it's very very close to the background then we can drop a little shadow on the background by using our Ctrl J to duplicate it, select the one under and we can hold our Ctrl down then drag the edge down, drag the edge down to this direction and this other edge to this direction. Then we have a little, we have a copy of this stuff. We have to use our direction tool to nudge to balance it up. Then we have it like this. We can see it bring it down a bit bring this down a bit then we we'll, we'll notch our direction key upward then balance it up then hit ok then we are going to use our we are going to use our levels if you use your control l you have your levels out then you will take it from take the output level from white to black you notice that it's gone to completely black 
then hit OK. So you have to go to filter, blur, then Gaussian blur. The value of 9, between 9 and 10 should be OK. Then you hit OK. Then you go to the opacity and reduce the opacity to like uh, brief 20 something. Let's say 20 should be OK. Then I think it's OK like this because now we are not having shadow on the background itself. So we can go on and bring in something else. Like we can see, go to the you can see go to the main drum and reduce the sharpness it's like it's looking sharper than the image so we are going to blur it a bit because there's there's difference between where the image is standing and where the drum is so because of the length and the depth of feed we have to reduce the sharpness of this stuff then go to filter blur and gaussian blur then we have to take something like the range of between 2.5 and Let's say two is okay. Then hit okay. Then we can see go to the opacity and reduce it a bit so that it not be too brilliant. Like ninety five or ninety four should be okay. Then we are good to go with this. Okay, let's say let's call this the big drum. Let's drag it and drop it on the image also. Then you can put it somewhere be behind the image also. In case you find your in case you find yours in front of the image, look at how it is. If you take it up here, it's going to be in front. But if you bring it under the transparent image, it's going to be behind. Then this is behind now, is behind the image. Now we can take it to real live big drum like this should be okay i think like this should be okay let it be a little bit behind so as to see that we have it behind the image then hit okay then we can see bring something else like and let's say this flower let's just put this flower and see we have it like this and if you take a look we have we have shadow with this thing and this shadow is separated if you take a look at this uh, selection here you notice that you notice that we have three layers here so they are comprised of each of these elements we can adjust the shadow separately uh, that is the advantage of this one so we have the image together like this with the shadow which we can adjust the shadow individually then we can just put it somehow like this if you take a look at it now it's behind the image it's behind the image but this one we are going to put it in foreground in foreground not background then we are going to be putting it in front then we'll have to take everything up this three layer up on the shadow can cast on the image directly so we can see reduce the size for any reason then hit okay then you can go to the shadow and the shadow should be this then we can reduce the opacity of the shadow to make it more realistic so this is the good thing about this then are we going to leave it like this i think it's okay like this we can see go ahead and let's position this to the edge we we'll have to select this flower itself go to filter blur then gaussian blur i think like this is okay because it's a little bit close to the image it has to be a little bit blurred because of the distance between it and the model so hit okay 1.1 is okay then we can go to the the three drum sets the three drum sets which is this then you go to filter blur then gaussian blur so because of the little difference between where the image is and where the stuff is, we can also use like 1.2 or 1.4 and hit OK so that it's not going to be sharper than the image. Now we have this. So if you take a look at this, you notice that a great job has been done here. It's just not that magical, but it's like reality. So like if you have all these props in your studio, better for you. But if you don't have them, you can easily place them like this so let's go ahead and make it more realistic by adding vignettes to it this vignette has to be on top 
on top so we have to click the upmost layer and add an empty layer then we'll click on this to choose black and hit ok then go to our paint bucket select our paint bucket and click anywhere around the box as long as the empty layer is selected then you get everything black then we'll go to our marquee tool and choose elliptical marquee tool and drag around the box like this then we are going to right click and feather with 650 or thereabouts 650 and hit ok then we are going to delete one two should be ok then use your ctrl d to deselect then go to your opacity and reduce your opacity like this so uh, i believe that this is great if you notice it's affecting the image too much on the face you can you can also go there click on that and pick your eraser to make sure your brush is very soft make sure it's selected the vignette is selected then you brush around the face so go in there and clean up the face So as you can see, isn't it amazing? We have, we have gone so far. Then if you take a look at this now, it looks so natural and so interesting. Hold our alt down and click on this eyes. You see the before, see the after. This is before, this is after. This is before, this is after. What do you think about this? The plain background and the one with pop, which do you prefer? Drop in the comment section. I believe that is it for today. If you find it interesting, helpful, and useful, let us know in the comment section telling us the area it has helped, the area it would have helped, and the area we need to improve on. Like I said earlier, if you are new on the channel, please do me a favor. Do me a favor by hitting that subscribe button. Not only by hitting that subscribe button, also ring down the notification bell so that I don't miss any of the next video. Thanks for watching today's video. Creative people, keep on creating. Please stay creative. Stay creative. For now, bye. See you in the next one.